Hi there, this is Kendall from Sager Family Farm, and today I'm gonna to show you how to do a beehive inspection in the fall. If you wanna be sure to see all of my latest farm videos, make sure to like this video and subscribe down below. The first thing I think about when I'm doing a fall beehive inspection is the weather. Today is a beautiful, sunny, very low wind day. I can see at the front of my beehive, the bees are coming and going. Uh, there's a lot of entrance activity. So that alone is gonna tell me this is a good day. I actually wanted to do this inspection a few days ago, but it was overcast, it was quite cold, so it was in the low 60s, and there was a lot of wind. So even if the temperature is all right, if there's a ton of wind, there's probably not gonna be a lot of entrance activity, not very many bees coming and going. So if the bees don't wanna leave the hive, you shouldn't be opening them and exposing them to the elements. The second thing I'm doing when I'm preparing for my fall hive inspections is I wanna make sure I have everything ready to go. This is actually something I do every single time, uh, but especially important in the fall because I wanna keep my hive inspection short because opening the hive, there can be increased robbing activity in the fall. So that means bees from the general area are really looking for nectar and honey. And if I open this hive and it smells great, I might be attracting other bees and it's gonna cause my hive to become very defensive very quickly. And there's gonna be a lot of bees in the air. So not great for a suburban area or just in general for the health of this hive. So I wanna make sure I've got all of my stuff ready to go. Um, so I've got my tools, I have some extra tools like a brush and whatnot in here. I've got a lighter and I actually even have a super prepared just in case because we have gotten a little bit of rain recently. The pepper trees have been blooming and eucalyptus can start blooming in the late fall. So I want to make sure I am prepared. This super unfortunately is just foundation. So that means it's just the foundation sheets it's not drawn usable comb. So drawn comb is great to give the bees at this time because they'll just start filling it with whatever nectar they can find. This time of year, the bees typically don't want to make new comb because there's not enough nectar to really encourage them to do that. They really need a strong nectar flow, so a lot of stuff blooming. But the eucalyptus might do that, so I've got this prepped anyway. If you have drawn comb that's sticky, smells really good, don't put it right next to your hive like what I'm doing right now. Keep it away from your hive or keep it prepared in your garage. Typically, I wouldn't need this this time of year, but I've got it just in case. Usually, I'm reducing the size of the hive, but we're gonna look inside and see what we find and see if we need this or not. Now I'm gonna do an external hive inspection. So basically, just look at everything from the outside. The first thing I'll look at is the entrance activity. Uh, the entrance activity is just the bees flying in and out, and the entrance activity on this hive looks great. There are a lot of bees coming and going. I'm typically looking for pollen on their back legs. Hopefully they're coming in with lots of pollen, uh, nectar, so food and resources for the hive. If there were only a few bees coming and going, like one or two, or no entrance activity at all, this would let me know that there's something wrong inside of this hive, or the hive might have died out. But based on this entrance activity, and I can see little bits of pollen coming in on the back legs, I think that this hive is gonna look good on the inside when I open it up. I'm also gonna look around the ground to see if there's excessive numbers of bees on the ground. I'm actually not seeing a whole lot of bees on the ground right now, which is great, um, because usually that indicates some sickness, viruses that they're dealing with that may have been spread by varroa mites. Um, so that looks really good. I'm looking for pests and predators, so to see if there's any ants around the outside of my beehive, I'm not seeing any ants. Um, I do see a yellow jacket or two. That's totally normal to have just a few. If you have a lot, they can be a burden on the beehive and be attacking them, stealing their resources. But typically it's normal to have some on the ground doing cleanup and eating the dead bees because they're scavengers. Now it's time to actually open the hive. So I'm gonna get my suit at least all the way on. And then I'm gonna light my smoker. So I've got a torch, but you could use um, one of those long fireplace lighters if you don't have one of these, but these are awesome. Ooh, when they work. 
There we go. And you want to get your smoker going really well, like so a good amount of flame so that it's going to create a lot of embers and stay smoking. And while you've got the flame going, this is a brand new hive tool, but before each of my inspections, I actually dip it in the flames. And this acts as kind of a sanitizing step uh, because if you're going from beehive to beehive, it helps keep your bees nice and healthy. So that looks pretty good to me. I can close this and I've got lots of smoke. It's nice and cool and that's ready to go. Now that I've got my smoker lit, I can get my gloves on and start the inspection. And I'm going to start off with my smoker. I'm going to put a few puffs right in the entrance of the beehive. So right here, I've got the entrance over here. So just give them a few little puffs. They don't need very much. So I'm just using the smoke as needed. And now I can open up the beehive. And it doesn't look like, oh, there's some bees up here. Sometimes there's a lot more bees up, but I'm gonna give just a few little puffs in the top before I open it up. All right, so we can see here, I can already tell that I don't need that super. And the way I can tell that is I'm looking at the cluster here, so I can tell that the bees are not really occupying like these three frames and even like these four frames here. So the cluster, if we look straight down on the bees here, you can see there's bees in between these frames. So they're really only using these three frames. And this right here is the cluster of bees. So I definitely don't need an additional super. So now let's take a closer look at what that cluster is up to. So I'm going to start by removing one of the outermost frames that doesn't really have any bees on it and it's not even drawn comb. So I'm going to place that to the side so I have a little more room to work. And then I can start by going right up next to the cluster and start to wedge apart some of those frames with my hive tool, kind of scoot them to the side so that I just go straight to looking at the cluster. And here, I'm actually seeing lots of like young little bees. I have a few older capped bees here, but I've got some eggs and some larvae in here. I'm not seeing very much food, so I'm not seeing pollen or nectar being stored in here. And that's definitely one thing I want to look for during the fall is that these bees aren't starving. So now I continue looking at each frame and I'm seeing some capped brood here surrounded by some big fat squishy white larvae. So I'm definitely seeing babies. I'm also seeing, I can use my finger really gently to move the bees out of the way. I'm seeing a little bit of shiny nectar or honey on the edges, but to raise babies, they really need bee bread. So they need pollen. So I'm going to keep looking. Hopefully I see some more food in there because that was not very much nectar or honey in here. And here I'm looking again. I've got kind of a, a spottier brood pattern. So I've got a few capped pupae in there. Oh, and here's my queen. So let's move this around. I'm always happy when I see her. So here she is right there. She's got a white mark on her, which I'm really happy to see because down here in San Diego, we have Africanized bees. So actually in the city of San Diego, I am legally required to mark my queen so that I know she is a docile subspecies of Apis mellifera. So I found her, that is always super. So I'm gonna turn her around. So she's facing me right now. 
and put her back in the hive. She's on the middle of the frame. I want to make sure she's not around any of the edges there because I don't want to crush her. I'll look at this frame. There's really nothing on it. There's a few bees. It is drawn, but they're not using that. So they're really only occupying three frames up here. So I'm going to take this whole box off and lift it to the side. So I'm going to loosen it first. And when I lift this, I'm not going to put it straight on the ground. I don't want to crush my queen. She's in here. I want to put this on another piece of equipment. I'm putting my top hive body on top of my outer cover. And uh, that is going to make sure there's very few points to squish my bees. So if I look like right here, that's one of the points that touches, but the whole base is not touching the ground. So I'm not going to be crushing bees down there. Now let's go back and take a look at the bottom hive body. So the bottom hive body, the cluster again, is not very large. So if I'm looking straight down, I'm looking here, I'm not really seeing bees in between these outermost ones. But then over here, that's one frame, two frame, three frame, four frame, five frames occupied. So all in all, I've got three frames occupied in the top and about five down here. So that's really only eight frames, which will fit easily in my 10 frame box. So what I'm gonna do down here is take out these unoccupied frames and I'm gonna put those top frames in here to consolidate the colony. One of the reasons to consolidate the colony is so that it's defensible for the bees. If you look right here, these are actually some cocoons for wax moth. So those are some of the pests that will start moving in if there's too much space in your beehive. So I have those cocoons, they haven't been removed by the bees, so I definitely want to take space away from these bees. So now I'm going to continue the inspection in the bottom box. I'm going to be consolidating, so I'm going to take out any unused frames. And while I'm inspecting where the cluster is down here, those five frames, I'm going to be looking for food because I really didn't see much food in that upper box. So I'm going to take one frame out at the very edge where there's not really any bees here. This is a, a nice drawn frame, so I'll set that one to the side. And now I'm going to take out all of the extra space. So this one not being occupied at all, so that is extra space. So we'll put that over to the side. Same thing with this one, empty space. So we put it off to the side. Sometimes these edge frames will have um, food in them, but those ones were 100% empty. So let's take a look in this one. The bees are starting to be on this one, but there's really not much of anything in it. So let's set that to the side for right now as well. Now we're getting into the cluster. So I expect to hopefully see some babies, some food in here. So let's see what we've got. And indeed, we've got some capped brood in here. So this is the capped brood. So there are definitely babies here, but in looking at the edges here, I'm not seeing any food. There is no nectar, no pollen really being stored. Here, I'm actually starting to see a little bit of pollen. There's a little bit of bee bread right in there. So they are bringing in some pollen, but not a lot. So I'm setting that frame over here because I know I have to keep that in here because there's babies. So let's take a look at this frame. There's some young brood in here. So there's eggs and some larvae, but again, not a lot of food in here. So I'm seeing the capped brood here. So I'm going to set that one and I'm going to nudge it straight up against that because that has babies in it too. So we're definitely keeping that frame. Here we've got even more capped brood, but again, no food. 
So there is no food in here. And then this is the last frame that appears to be really occupied. And there is actually a little bit of bee bread in there. You can see the yellow, the colorful, uh, um, different colors of pollen in there. So there is a little bit of food in here, but not a lot. And so I'm actually, when I'm all done here, going to set up a feeder for these bees because there is really no food in here. So they are not finding enough to eat. So these ones, now we'll just double check these frames. There's a little bit of pollen in this one, so I'll leave that off to the side. Uh, there's no babies in it, so I don't want to snug it up with this part, these frames that I'm putting together, because I want to take the frames that were occupied in the top and put them together with these guys. This one is a nice drawn comb, but it's empty. So we're going to set that to the side. So this one had food in it, so I'm going to put it to the outside for now. And now I'm going to consolidate. So I'm going to grab my frames from my other box. And hopefully I see my queen bee again. Because I do want to make sure she is in this final hive. So here, this frame has brood on it. So I'm going to make sure that goes right next to these frames. So I'm consolidating the brood nest. Now I'm going to get my next frame. And this has some young larvae on it. And then there's my queen. I'm really glad I saw her. There she is. So, but I'm going to put her in. And again, I really like to put her facing the rest of the colony. So now I've put her on this side of the frame. So that way I know where she is. And I know she's in the middle so that I'm not going to squish her by wedging a frame in on the other side. And here's the last frame that had some babies in it. So I'm going to put that over here. So now my cluster is all together in one box. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frames. So one of those frames that was being occupied wasn't babies. So I've still got that food frame over here. And now I'm going to see what else we've got. When I'm filling in this extra space, because I always want to have 10 frames, so it looks like I need two more frames. I want to put in, this one has some nectar in it, so I definitely want to put this one in, because there was not a lot of food. And I'm going to put that right on the edge of the brood nest. And I'm going to put this one with pollen snugged right up to the edge of the brood nest. And now I have one more space to fill, and I'm just going to fill it with nice drawn comb so that these bees can use this space if they need it. So I'm going to put that in here and gently push it down. And then I'm going to snug my frames together, make sure they're nice and centered and there's no gaps. And now I can start uh, closing up my hive a little bit. I can sweep. There's not a lot of bees on my extra equipment but I can sweep them in with a bee brush. Luckily, I have my bee brush handy in my extra equipment. So I'm gonna make sure all the bees are out of this box first, and then I'm gonna use that box to take away all the extra frames. So, and when I'm brushing, I just wanna do these quick little flicks. You don't wanna do a nice slow movement like with other things in the beehive, because then the bees just get caught in your brush and they do not like that very much. So there's not very many bees in here. So now I'm going to start sweeping off my extra frames. And I'm going to try and do this quickly because with drawn comb, the bees are attracted to that. So I don't want them to come back to it. This one's just foundation. And now I'm ready to close up my hive. So I've got all of the extra equipment out. I can put 
my inner cover back on. And there's a few bees here on the edges. So what I like to do, especially because this is a nice lightweight piece of equipment, is I'll put that inner cover back on and I kind of slide it. So I kind of give it this little like scooting motion so that the bees know to get out of the way. And I'm putting it on a little kitty corner and kind of giving it this turn. And that way when I press down, there's no little crunches. So I didn't squish any bees there. And for right now, I'm gonna take this box, stand it up so I can get my outer cover back. So I just closed up this hive, but I noted that there was really no food in here. And what I didn't have prepped today was food for the bees. So the two things that I would love to give these bees is, one, I would love to give them a pollen patty. You can buy pollen patties and give them to your bees. But the main thing I really wanna give them is a sugar water mixture that simulates honey. So I'm definitely gonna come back and put uh, a feeder on here. And what I do for a feeder is I have a glass mason jar, poke some holes in the top. I fill that jar with, um, at this time of year, a two to one sugar to water ratio. Um, so you're gonna have to heat that up, mix it, and put it on the beehive. And then that way the bees can come up and lick that. If you wanna see how I make my feeders, and have a short checklist of what to do for your fall inspection, I'll have a link to another video in the description down below so that you can check that out. So that's how I do my fall beehive inspections. Make sure to like this video and subscribe down below and see you next time on the farm.